Welcome to The Art of Medicine, the program that explores the arts, business, and clinical aspects of the practice of medicine. I'm Dr. Andrew Wilner, and my guest today is Dr. Michelle Mudge Riley. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. Excited to be here. Well, Michelle, before we get started, I want to explain that today is a bonus episode. Normally, for those of you who have been following, this program is released every two weeks. But this time, I squeezed an extra program in the middle, and that's because you have a special conference coming up pretty soon, and I didn't want to be doing a program, you know, in uh, August about your program in July. So today we're uh, May uh, 15 or so, and it's COVID time. And first, so tell me a little bit about what you do and what's going on now. Yeah, well, I don't think we have enough time for me to talk about all the things that I do, so I'll keep it short here. I, uh, about 18 years ago, I thought I would be a practicing pathologist, but you know how plans go, the best laid plans, right? And so now I'm here, I've spent years doing consulting work, starting businesses, working at medical device firms, insurance firms, and um, talking with other doctors who also pursued a non-clinical career, which is what I did. So today I'm here to talk a little bit about COVID-19 and how that's affected physicians who are looking at or in a non-clinical career and some of the things that we're doing to support them. So, so you're basically, you're a physician coach. People come to you and say, hey, I'm a physician and I got this idea. Maybe I'm not happy or maybe I just want to do something entrepreneurial. And you sit down with them and you Zoom with them and you talk with them about uh, how to be, how to make your dreams realistic, something along those lines. So I have been a physician coach and mentor for years. I, I did it for almost full time for about 13 years. And I've really sort of pivoted what I do because I got so busy with all of the things I was doing. So I couldn't um, dedicate as much time to the coaching. So now actually what I do is create a community for other coaches and others who are doing non-clinical things to come together and find each other, as well as for people who are interested in non-clinical careers to come and find out resources and ways that they can carve their path if that's what they're interested in doing. Okay, all right. So, well, you know, May 15, <laughs> we're all going to work and outside with masks where I think physicians, you know, you read the news and uh, people are getting their salaries cut, other people are getting bonuses, some doctors who are over 60 uh, wondering whether they should even be going to work, you know, and being exposed. And of course, many healthcare workers are going to work very responsibly and uh, some of them are uh, getting ill and uh, dying. So I think, I think it's enough that at least most people, I would guess, are sort of reassessing their career. And, you know, it raises a question, is this something I really want to do? And the answer may be a resounding yes, or it may be, gee, I don't know, I've been kind of on the fence. <laughs> this might be enough to, uh... so have you seen any of that is my question. Yeah, so there has been an uptick in interest in non-clinical careers. And the thing that I want to emphasize is the non-judgmental piece of this. So it's okay to be looking at a non-clinical career. I know sometimes people have a lot of guilt. Mm -hmm. Physicians feel like they went to medical school, they should be practicing, especially if they're either in part-time roles or maybe not practicing right now at all they really feel like they should be on the front lines because we're physicians, we wanna help, we want to make things better. And with COVID-19, there's an opportunity to really get in there and, and help. The flip side is that there's also a lot of fear and this virus just has so much that we don't understand about it. Um, there's so much in the news, there's so much that we're trying to figure out that People just aren't sure if they even want to be going out there and exposing themselves and their families, as you said. So it's a very strange time. <laughs> it, 
is it a more I mean, starting a new career is difficult, and I think that's something that physicians don't always realize. They figure, oh, I can do that, and they forget that they've spent, you know, 15 years, you know, 100 hours a week getting good at what they do. And just to uh, jump off and become a restaurant owner or a real estate uh, magnate, uh, th those things actually require some uh, training and preparation as well. And even if you're a, a really smart guy, uh, you may not realize that you need a bigger foundation than what you've got. So uh, <laughs> that being said, is COVID making it even harder to start a new business? So those things that you described are very um, non-COVID related. So th those things occur whether we have COVID or not. Um, Physicians Helping Physicians exists as a starting point for people who are looking at a non-clinical career because real estate and some of those other things that you mentioned, owning a restaurant, those are not really the only options that a physician can get into if they don't want to practice. And in fact, those are things that very few physicians get into when they're considering a non-clinical career. There are things that physicians can get into because they're physicians, whether licensed or not, board certified or not. And most people do have a license and board certification. So it's easy as well to get into things like utilization review work, telemedicine work, healthcare IT. There are lists of things that you can find all over the internet for jobs for physicians who are interested in a non-clinical career. The problem is finding out the pros and cons of those jobs and what it really takes and how to get into those jobs. So that has been the thing that I've helped physicians with over the past almost two decades is actually the how of getting into those things. Cause that's the most common question. One, what are my options? Two, how do I get into those things? So that's why I created this conference because coaching can often be very high ticket. And a lot of people just don't have the money to invest or they're not really sure that they wanna do that. A conference is a great place to start. And I've told people that for years, even before I created my own conference you're interested in a topic or an industry, find a conference where you can learn more about it. It's a budget conscious way of sort of dipping your toe in and seeing what it's all about, getting resources, that kind of thing. Now, uh, you've uh, done these conferences before, right? Wasn't there, there was one last year in uh, Texas, right? That's right, that was our, our in-person conference. We had over 81 physicians there and 100% of attendees said that they would come back and tell their friends about it. So when I started thinking about this year's conference, um, well, COVID-19 hit, so we had to go virtual. And, and it's actually been a wonderful thing because it's made the ticket price go down, so it's even more affordable. And it's more accessible because physicians from all over the world, all over the country can join. You, you don't have to travel, you can be uh, listening to the presentations in your PJs. And we even have a networking component. So I have a software system that allows for us all to do some networking, sit at different tables, meet people, meet the speakers, get more advice. I know it sounds very techy, but if you join us, you'll see how cool it is. Well, you just click. I, I think I will join you as a matter of fact. Uh, so uh, let's see. So when is it? When is the conference? So the conference was originally a one-time event. That's what we did last year. That's how most traditional conferences are. But as I was thinking about this, I realized this needs to be three separate events. And you can pay for one, two, or all three events. You don't have to come to all of them. Um, that makes it even more affordable. The first event is in July. It, it starts on July 10th, and it runs for five days. There are over 25 physicians speaking on all sorts of topics related to career transition. That's really the start here. This is where you want to find out more about non-clinical careers. In September, we have making, um, finding out what your options are. And that is physicians, five days of physicians talking again about their non-clinical careers. So there are in-depth presentations on over 25 different industries that physicians can transition into. You get to hear from doctors who have successfully transitioned, the pros, the cons, the resources, how to get into a job like medical writing or medical science liaison or pharma or value-based care or utilization review. 
or locums or telemedicine or IT. I could go on and on, but you can see the schedule if you log into the website or if you just search the website, you'll see who's speaking and what they're speaking on. Then in November, we have a session called Making It Happen. And in that session, you will get a chance to create your, your non-clinical resume, work on your elevator pitch, work on interview questions, all of the things that some people need in order to really make that jump to the non-clinical career. So we go from finding out more about non-clinical careers, how easy it is, pros and cons, to, okay, what are your options in September? Um, you can narrow it down, narrow down your focus, to in November, making it happen, really narrowing, focusing, honing in on what you need and what you're going to um, absolutely have to have to get there, either in 2020 or 2021. Well, it sounds very informative. And just, just listening to, to your overview, I think what, what I find particularly uh, exciting is that the, it's a physician-to-physician -physician conference. You know, and when, when you get up people, even when I listen to people with PhDs or MBAs, or they have, and of course, some of your physicians probably have other degrees as well, but uh, certainly uh, speaking to someone who has been in your shoes <laughs> as a fellow physician gives them a lot of uh, credibility. And I, I think an instant uh, intimacy, you don't really have to explain where you're coming from. So uh, it sounds like if someone wants to tune in for an hour or for the whole week um, to see if it's uh, helpful to them, um, sounds like an easy thing to do. Real easy and replays are included with your ticket. So you don't have to worry about missing things and you can always go back and watch something. There's, there's no additional price for those replays. So um, that's another value add that we wanted to put in there. Great. So uh, just to wrap up, how do people find you and find more information about the uh, conference? Well, I know you're going to post a link to the schedule and that'll be great. So people can click on that. You can also just search physicians helping physicians and find the schedule, find the website, learn more, uh, look at the bios of the speakers, look at the schedule. The schedules for July and September are posted, um, so you can see those. The one for November has not yet been finalized, so that's still coming. We also have a very good price going on right now that will go up on May 28th, and we also have a buy one, get, two, get one free um, offer when you're checking out. If you decide to uh, sign up for one of these conferences, you'll see that. So you have the chance to save a little bit of money and that's always good, especially right now during these uncertain times with COVID-19. Michelle, it's been uh, a pleasure as always. Thanks for joining us and explaining how physicians interested in non-clinical careers can uh, pursue their uh, dreams. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thanks, Dr. Wilner. Bye-bye.